Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's going well. I'm Grant. I'm Eric. Nice to meet you. So what do you got going on here, Eric? Well, so here uh, I'm working on a quad rotor on the ground down here, and uh, I've been working on this for a couple of years. What we're using them for is uh, building maps of environments, and we're using them to go around and explore these buildings. And uh, essentially what we can do with these 3D models is um, use them uh, to give the robot its own reference frame so that it can figure out where it is inside the environment. So you fly it around, it maps the surroundings, and then theoretically it can then navigate its own way around. That's correct. Uh, so, so what could be one of the practical applications of this? Uh, so what you could use this for is uh, you can essentially monitor different locations for security. Uh, you could use it to uh, send it into a damaged building. For example, we have one quad rotor similar to this one that we're deploying into the Fukushima nuclear reactor. Right, um, where people can't go, but robots can venture. Exactly. Cool, all right, can I get a demo? Sure, yeah, so on the screen here, yeah. uh, I have the robot. It's uh, sort of a visualization of the robot and its current environment that it sees. Okay. And so uh, this is all that it can see from the laser scanner, and you'll see that once I lift it off, it begins to populate the So, map. right, so this is where we are right now, is that right? Yep, that's correct. Okay, cool. Oh, wow, I can see your map changing in real time. That's right. That's awesome. So I can fly it forward. Yeah, it's getting more and more detail. That's cool. And so if I turn around, yeah. you'll see it start to see stuff. In fact, you'll even see where we are on the map. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then right here on the computer screen, we've got a whole map of what you just flew. Right, so this is the building that we're in. Ah. Um, and so these are the desks, the Vicon Arena right behind us here. Uh, and you can see uh, the two of us standing right there in there. <laughs> just looks like the Matrix to me, but okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really neat. That's awesome. And so you could actually click on it and then could it navigate itself through this space now? Right, yes, so if I click the point anywhere in here, it could plan a trajectory to it and then follow that trajectory along. That is great. Well, cool, thanks a lot, Eric. Yeah, I got more thanks, robots Grant. to see. Take care. Bye. Hey, how's it going? I'm Grant. Good, I'm Derek. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. All right, so what do you have here? This looks like a giant battle arena. Sure. Well, this is what we call the Vicon Arena. So we have um, multiple robots that we can put inside the arena, and they have Vicon beads on them. So okay. little reflective be beads that the uh, cameras can pick up. For and motion tracking. For motion tracking, exactly. So we uh, construct the models here, and we can show them on our, on our screen here. Okay. And these uh, provide odometry information, position information for the robots to show where they are in space. So this is how our robots in test scenarios can see where they are. Okay. Um, which is especially important for these small robots because it's harder to fit you know, big sensors on them. Yeah. But the, the basic work we're trying to do here is we're trying to get um, multiple robots to be able to perform a series of tasks uh, in, our, in, in an area um, persistently over long periods of time. So we want it to be able to lift up, fly around, do its tasks, and come back down and recharge and be able to go back. But for our test case, we have it um, lifting up off these landing pads flying around the arena a couple of times, visiting certain points in space, and landing back down. Then it will start back up again and do another run. All right. Can you show me? Sure. Let's give it a shot. So they are flying themselves autonomously right now. They have certain places that they have to go to. Exactly. And ideally, they will land back on their pads after a certain amount of time. Exactly. So we actually have the, the planner operating autonomously. So they have points in space they want to visit, but they don't know the order. So what they do is they try and figure out what's the most efficient way to visit all these points, do all the, perform all these tasks. Oh, so uh, he's already sequence. done. So he started <laughs> lower, so he's got less of a, less he has to travel. But after we do one cycle, they all will go back to their, their home bases and then start up again. <laughs> right, and so the idea is that, say, in a factory setting, right. they just keep doing this over and over again. Over and over and over again. But like, as they're performing the tasks, we're, we're working for them yeah, to be able to learn how long it takes for a task to be completed, how much fuel it costs. 
so that as they're going, they can more and more efficiently perform all the tasks they need to do. Cool. So they don't have to um, be linked to a central computer so this to is, get assigned their tasks. So this is how we're doing it currently. Yeah. We can work in the future towards a more decentralized approach. There's people who do that. Yeah. But we're currently working with a centralized approach. So we will, we're actually using a server. We have a central computer that's um, taking the tasks and trying to distribute them right. optimally. Yeah, because I um, visited a factory where they had robotic forklifts. Right. And each forklift was given a mission, mm -hmm. like you know, one of these tasks. Right. And then when they're done, they report back to the central computer and say, okay, I'm done, give me another mission. Right. And then the, the central computer, mission control, schedules everything for them. Sure. But we have, so we have, um, that one's run out of batteries. Oh. Um, we caught one. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because he doesn't have a recharging station yet. He doesn't yet, okay. so we're working on that. Well, see, he'll notice that this one hasn't finished yet, so it's going to stop is for he, now. Okay. I was going to say, is he going to go and, and do the other one's task? No, nah, he's still waiting for the other guy to finish. So, in the, like, we're working towards um, the ability to recognize when robots have uh, failed, when they're no longer able to perform their task and then redistribute. Sure. So that's something that will fall out um, sort of organically out of the way we set up our approach, but we have to encode the ability to recognize that a, a robot has failed. Yeah, yeah. So all we have to do is take one robot out of our planner and then plan with what we have. Right, so it can recover, the system sure. can recover. So he'll be sitting there dead, but we still have the rest of the robots able to continue performing the tasks. Excellent. So, how does it feel to be on the cutting edge of the robot apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like I'm engineering the robot apocalypse. That's right, you know, you, you have heard of Skynet, right? Sure, we're working on yeah, it. Yeah, okay, good. I just wanted to make sure yeah. we're on the same page here. Sure. Okay. So if you lift this one up, you can oh, see yeah. it moving through ah, space. That's awesome. So you can see the model is tilting with the robot. It's yeah. fixed to these Vicon beads. So oh, that's great. We calibrate, it's so smooth, too. Right. So we calibrate the model to the center of the robot, so the robot will always know where its center is in space. So this way we don't have to put any sensors on the robot. We just put these little beads, and then we can rely on the system we have here. This is perfect for our, our test set, so it's very fast, very accurate. Yeah. And it's a little bit of data that we just have to pass on to the robot. Oh, that's great. Well, all right. Hey, best of luck, man. Thank you. <laughs> and when the robot apocalypse comes, I'll know where it started. Exactly. <laughs>